Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture we're going to look at limits at infinity. So up till now our focus on limits has always been what is the limiting value of a function as the input as x goes to a particular number. So the limit as x goes to a of f of x. Uh, in plain language this is really asking the question what is the function doing around the point a? Now we're going to be focused on the question what is the function doing at its ends? What's the end behavior of the function? What is our function doing as our x values go off to positive infinity? What is our function doing as the x values go off to negative infinity? Those are the questions we're going to be interested in now. And these are known as the limits at infinity. So in order to work through uh, calculations involving limits at infinity, it's really important to have your basic functions, the graphs of your basic functions in mind. So let's just refresh our memories with some graphs of some of the basic functions. So f of x being 1 over x, what does the graph of this look like? The reciprocal function. Well, it looks something like this. Now there's some features of this graph that we of course know about just through analyzing the the expression, and that is, as x gets closer and closer to a through positive values, what is 1 over a small positive number doing? That's a really big number, so we can see that that's why it's blowing up here. So we head towards 0 from the right. As you head towards 0 from the left, it's heading off towards negative infinity, because 1 over a small negative number is a really big negative number. What happens as we head off towards positive or negative infinity? As x gets really, really big in the positive, 1 over a really big positive is a number close to 0 but positive. And so that's indicating what this end behavior should be. So just thinking about what happens as the x values change. So there's our graph of our 1 over x function. What about e to the x? So e to the x looks like this. And of course it's passing through the point when x is 0, the y-intercept is 1. So it looks something like this. As the x values get really big, the function gets really big. As the x values get, go off to negative infinity, the function values get closer and closer to 0. What about arctan? So arctan, the inverse tan function. Now, it, uh, this is an important one to have in mind. So if you don't know it right now, um, I'll give you a quick way to remember it. But it is important to have the arctan function in mind. It does come up quite a bit. So how could we get the graph of the arctan function if we don't remember it? We'll start with the tan function. This is the inverse function of the tan function. Start with the tan function. In fact, just start with the tan function restricted to an interval on which it's 1 to 1. And so one piece, one period of the tan function looks like this. It runs from negative pi by 2 to pi by 2. So that's y equals tan of x. To get the graph of the inverse function, you just flip the graph of the original over the line y equals x. So starting with that, we can get the graph of the arctan function by just switching the x and y coordinates of all the points on the graph. And that means that those vertical asymptotes now become these horizontal lines here. So that's pi by 2 and negative pi by 2 and the curve itself then does this. So that's our y equals arc tan of x, also written, as I've written above, as tan inverse of x. So there's the graph of the arc tan function, an important one to keep in mind. What about this next function, this rational function, 1 over 1 plus x squared? You may not have this one committed to memory, in fact you probably don't, but we can figure out what it looks like just by looking at a few different x values. First note that it's an even function. If you plug in a positive x value or its corresponding negative x value, you get the same value out of the function because of the squaring there. So this is an even function, so it's going to be symmetric, to ra symmetric around the y-axis. Also note that as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, since the that makes the denominator bigger and bigger and bigger, then it pulls the whole expression down to 0. No matter which direction you're going, to positive infinity or negative infinity, the function's going to be 1 over a really big number, which is therefore really small. 
So the biggest this value, the biggest value this function can take on is going to be when the denominator is the smallest, and that's at zero. So when x is zero, you get one over one or one. And so it looks like this. It sort of comes down. It's got this like bump in it here, and then it's symmetric. So it looks something like this. It's a height of one. Okay. Okay, so you'll notice here though that in graphing these things, I did play around a little bit with as x gets big, what's the values of the function doing? As x goes off to negative infinity, what are the values of the function doing? The reason I did this is because, well, this is precisely what limits at infinity are doing. So I'm just going to re-express some of the things, some of the features of these graphs in terms of that terminology. So we notice that as x goes to infinity, what does 1 over x go to? 1 over x is getting close to 0. As x goes to negative infinity, what does 1 over x go to? Well, it's going to 0 as well. As we head off towards negative infinity, the function values are going to 0. What about for the exponential function? Well, as x goes to infinity, what are the values of our exponential function doing? Well, they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, so they're heading off to infinity as well. As x goes to negative infinity, what are our values of our exponential function doing? Well, they're getting closer and closer and closer to 0. How about the arctan function? Well, as x goes to infinity, the arctan of x gets close to, as we head off towards infinity, the function values are getting closer and closer to pi by 2. What about as we go to negative infinity? Well, the values of the arctan function are heading towards negative pi by 2. And how about this last function? Well, as x goes towards either positive or negative infinity, it doesn't matter which direction we're going, 1 over 1 plus x squared, that expression, those values are going towards 0. Okay, so this, dis this discussion here about what's going on as x gets big, either going to infinity or going to negative infinity, what are the function values doing is really interesting. It's really interested in what the end behavior of these functions are. What is it doing as you head off in either direction? And this gives rise to then, this definition. So here's the definition of a limit at infinity. So we suppose f is defined on an interval uh, from a off to infinity. So at some point off to infinity, then the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x is equal to l. So this is what we're defining here. We're defining what it means for the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x to be l. Means that we can take the function, the, the, that the function values can be made arbitrarily close to l by taking x sufficiently large. So you take x larger and larger and larger and larger, and the function values get closer and closer and closer to l. Okay, We can do the same definition as you go to negative infinity. You just have to make sure the function is defined from negative infinity to some finite a value. OK, so with this new terminology, let's evaluate these limits. So what is the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x? So all of these things that are listed here, all these limits, are really just taking the things we did on the previous page, all these things that we wrote down, and just writing it using that new notation involving a limit as x goes to infinity. So what is the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x? Well, as x gets really big, 1 over x goes to 0. What about as x goes to negative infinity of 1 over x? Still, it's going to 0. And these are really important ones to keep in mind. When you've got a denominator that's getting big, then the ratio and the, and the numerator is not getting big. So the numerator is staying at 1, and the denominator is getting really big, then the ratio is going to 0. We're going to use this one again and again and again over the next few examples. So what's happening as x goes to negative infinity of e to the x? So what's the limit as x goes to negative infinity of e to the x? That's 0. Again, recall the exponential function. This is why it's important to have all of these graphs in mind, because all of these limits can be computed directly from the image of what the graph is in your head. As you head off towards negative infinity, the function values are getting close to 0. What about the arctan function? As you head off towards infinity, arctan is getting closer and closer to pi by 2. What if you head towards negative infinity? It's getting closer and closer to negative pi by 2. So the limiting value is negative pi by 2.
Okay, so what we're going to do over the next few examples, over the rest of this lecture, is do a number of examples involving limits at infinity. So these are our basic ones. These are just coming from the graphs of the functions. Now, what happens if we don't know the graph of the function? Can we sort of figure out what the limiting value should be? And the answer is absolutely we can. Um, we're going to use some of these basic ones when we need them, and then we're going to look at methods for computing limits in general, limits at infinity in general. Now, before we get to the calculations, I want to introduce one more bit of terminology. This is a term you've heard before, undoubtedly you heard before in previous classes. Um, we're bringing it up again here because this is the natural place to define what we mean by a horizontal asymptote. Now in your previous classes you may have heard definitions like a horizontal asymptote is a line that the function gets close to but doesn't touch. This was a working definition and it probably helped get some intuitive ideas about what a horizontal asymptote is but it's actually a really horrible definition. This is the rigorous definition we've got listed here, and it involves the idea of a limit. Now, why is it a horrible definition to say that the uh, a horizontal asymptote is a line that the function gets close to but does not touch? Well, a function can touch its horizontal asymptote. You know, for example, let's think of a function that maybe does this. It oscillates, but then it, its amplitude gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So here's an example of a function that's getting closer, the values are getting closer and closer and closer to zero as the inputs get bigger and bigger and bigger. So we would say it has a horizontal asymptote. It has a horizontal asymptote because the function values are getting close to zero the larger the input values are. But it touches it infinitely often. This function touches that graph infinitely often, or sorry, touches that, that line, that horizontal line, infinitely often. So it's much better to define a horizontal asymptote in terms of a limit. This is a much more natural way to define it. So what is a horizontal asymptote? Well, the line y equals l is called the horizontal asymptote of our function if either the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x is l, so in other words, as you head off in the positive direction down the axes, your function values get closer and closer to L. Or, as you head off in the other direction, towards a negative infinity, your function values get closer and closer to L. That's it. So you have a horizontal asymptote if either of these limits is a finite number, is some number L. Okay, so notice that this definition does not involve mentioning anything about getting close to but does not touch, none of that. It's just the function values are approaching L in one of the two directions, either to the right or to the left, as you head off to infinity, then you have a horizontal asymptote. 